first I was gay, and then I was like a gay activist, but like a button-up suit wearing one. And then I was like gay, like really gay, um, like flamboyant as hell, like gay, 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 gay. And then it just went off the deep end when I went to Goodwill and bought a bunch of skirts. Being female, being feminine is, is about being hairless and sleek being waifish and floating like a reed. I am kind of waifish and lanky. I have grace in my movement. Um, my legs go on for approximately eight miles, but I'm kind of a little bit of a teddy bear. It's like fuzzy everywhere. And I have these little gorgeous hair follicles on my face and they create natural contouring for me that I grow in my sleep every night. You could either be physical and you know, play sports with the boys or play on the jungle gym with the girls. I wanted it all. I would not settle for any rules about my gender because I was like, I wanna go in the woods, play with bugs, dig out some clay from the creek bed, make my mom a cute little pot for her flowers, fight with sticks for a little while, get cleaned up, put on a tutu, dance around my house to like some Britney Spears song, play with some Barbies, read a science book about planets, and then go to bed. I ultimately settled on being like a nerd. None of the nerds were expected to be cool anyway. And part of being cool was really subscribing to gender norms in a specific way. I had a little bit of a pot belly when I was a kid. One of my brother's friends, he would be like, oh, Jacob, are you pregnant? And it was his way of saying both, you're fat and you're feminine. I just always had so much gender. I just had like gender oozing everywhere. I came out as gay first because I thought that'd solve the problem. And also because I think when you're 16 and your hormones are raging, the most important identity that you have is your sexual identity. And I thought that if I declared my sexuality properly, I would be done. I never came out as non-binary. I never had one day where I said, everyone, this is me. That never happened. It was an unfurling. The paradox of being trans feminine and particularly of being, you know, like sort of middle of the spectrum is that the more in touch I get with my body, the more out of touch I have to get with it. Being gender non-conforming in a very public facing city like New York City requires incredible denial mechanisms. It requires the ability to tune lots and lots of people out and it requires the ability to just have a really irrational belief that you won't be next and that nothing bad will happen to you. You give up the ability to be seen as physically attractive even though you're seen as glamorous. But then thinking about what my body wants, thinking about how it feels, like really connecting with my body reminds myself just how little I, I have access to touch, just how little I have access to partnership and holding someone else. When you're trans feminine, you're outside of almost every script that we have for eroticizing people and appreciating their beauty, especially when you're attracted to you know, more masculine of center people, which there's nothing inherently wrong about that, but it feels wrong because it's so unrealistic. The men that you're attracted to can never or don't know how to acknowledge their desire for you. I know that when I'm walking out on the street, there are so many people who think I'm beautiful, who think that I'm sexy. And I think about all that someone would have to give up to date me in terms of their own access to being normal and to a normal life. And it's not like the gay community is any better. Cause it's like, I can't really date gay guys anymore. I, I mean, I could try, but it's like, this is not a man. The thing that's interesting when you don't pursue medical transition of any kind is that every day you have to choose to give those things up again. I congratulate myself for every single day that I don't cut my hair and every single day that I put lipstick on and every single time that I swipe that little eyeliner on my upper lid. But then what I've had to let myself do is be like, you know what, Jacob? If it's easier for you to go and get a bagel in the morning just wearing gym shorts and a t-shirt, you're allowed to do that. You don't owe it to people every day, every moment, to challenge an entire system. I can't change it alone, mm -hmm. and I shouldn't act like I can. Nothing about me is controversial mm -hmm. in my own head. Mm -hmm. Nothing about anything about this is different or strange or weird. Everything about this is just totally normal and possible and wonderful. It just exists and doesn't have to defend itself and doesn't have to justify itself and is 100% natural, fully organic. Even saying I am gender non-conforming is a lie. There's no such thing as gender conforming. You can't be an outsider to human gender. If you are a human being, you are inside human gender and you got one and it's great and it should be there but we don't have the language for me to even describe mm -hmm. why I struggle to be at peace with myself without singling out why I don't belong. 
I just want us to take gender from two dimensions and to give it so many dimensions that it's like an extravagant jewel that just shimmers everywhere and captures the light and plays with it in a way that we can't understand is possible right now. We have no way of seeing that level of joy because we don't allow ourselves all those facets yet. I feel beautiful a lot. Like, I'm really pretty and I know it. My name is Jacob Tobiah and I want to dispel the myth that beauty comes in two genders. Pow, pow.